Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at Google Docs newer feature coming out called Document Tabs. This is a feature that allows you to organize your document by having almost additional documents within it. In this, the rollout piece is coming out in October. Um, October 7th is where rapid release domains could have it up to 15 days, where then the 21st is the scheduled release domains, and then one to three for, you know, the feature to actually be visible for others. And this is actually available to all users, including personal accounts. Now, I will leave this Google article in the description so you can take a look at what they have to say about these. Really, this um, GIF or GIF, whichever way you say it and whatever side you're on really is the thing I should say kind of shows what you can do with this. And I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail, but I am super excited about this update. Now, if you wanna follow along, you can. From my testing, you actually are able to test this out if you make a copy in the description. So go ahead and find that link if you want, and you can you know follow along and make some tabs. So it used to be that this would show the outline of your document, and that will still stay the same. So if you have a header one, you can see that within the tab. Same for, you know, header two, header three, and etc. Now, in this, what changes, you can actually add new tabs. So it used to kind of be that you would just have these and this would be your organization. So then you would, you know, if you wanted to jump down to another page in the document, you'd go to the header three. But now you can actually push add tab and now there's this tab one and then here's tab two. Now mine is black here because my defaults are actually what I call dark mode, which is a, the pageless setup along with a dark color there. Even if you go back to the pages, then it'll be this dark mode, even though it's more like a paper. And I do that just because I prefer dark mode and kind of annoyed that there isn't dark mode yet. but hopefully soon. Anyway, in this, I might just actually copy this just so that we have a same streamlined one, but you can push the plus and then get it too. So in any case, here you can see that there is this tab one and then this copy. So maybe this copy, I want to call it something like um, technology asset management. And so here, we have this tab that has this header one, two, three, and then this one I can start doing, you know, asset management. And then maybe this one will just be like the description bar code setup and etc. Then if you want, you can have normal text and whatever. So in this, if you click into it, you can see that here I have this set up. And then if I go to tab one, now it is a different page completely. Even with this, you can actually go and, you know, change the page setup. Maybe you want this one to be pageless. And, you know, with pageless, you can actually insert a cover image too, which is a newer one too. And let's see if there's like a techish one. Not really, so let's just do a bridge, for example. And, you know, I kind of have liked the pageless ones just because you can actually close these different components. So you can have like a description, the barcode setup, and that's honestly what I used to do when there wasn't tabs. Now you can get a kind of nice look if it's like a smaller one with the little headers. It, you know, pros and cons to either one. But in any case, now we have these two separate tabs that allows you to do different things. So you can have this tab to just kind of be like the overview. You can have the asset management. Maybe you wanna make another thing that will be instead of the asset management to be the person management or accounts maybe, you know, maybe, yeah, maybe I'll do accounts. And then, you know, you can switch this on how you uh, change accounts within the organization. Another thing that you can do to help with this organization is you can actually click into this and take an emoji. And you can write 
you know, like I want this paper, maybe a document, try dot, yeah, like a document to kind of give an overview. Here's what this document is all about, dot, 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 et cetera. You can have, you know, different options within there. And then you can have this be like a computer. And that just helps those who are in here to see what's the overview. You can see what the technology is about. And then here for accounts, maybe you find one that's like a person or like, uh, those kind of look like accounts. Yeah, we could try that. And then, you know, again, from here, you have these different account management descriptions, how you make the accounts, however you want it. Now, another thing that you can do is you can actually add sub tabs. So if you want this tab to be, you know, something new, you can do that. And here's my defaults again. So maybe I'll just instead duplicate this and let's just remove this. And now instead of just making that duplicate there, you can actually click it. You can drag it to switch the order or you can drag it on top of one where you can kind of see the outline. And when you do that, it'll actually copy that into it. So here you could maybe have something, you know, unique of like there's account management and then you can, you know, have the account statuses. And maybe you make something like a table, say like a four by four. And then, you know, you can say like the staff name, email, status, notes. And then we could add a status like a drop down. And then this is what I made. So I'll just do that and copy it. And then now I'm able to enter it in and then just have notes of the status, whatever you could have a date. But anyway, just again, what's nice about this is that it allows you to make a nice document and it's almost how I would compare it to, this is now a like file cabinet and then you can have file folders be different separate, you know, accounts and things. So you can really give it a different flavor of text. You can, you know, adjust these images if you want so that, you know, each one just looks a little different. Like here's technology. Oh, now I'm in accounts management. Here's some different statuses and so on. Now, a couple of things that I have noted as I've used this could be in the limitations, but also depending on what it is, might be good. So let's say that we're in this overview and let's, you know, overview, um, let's say description and probably just want this to be single text, dot, dot, dot. Maybe you want the overview to have like links, like a table of contents. So if you just do the insert table of contents, let's just do this plain text. You can see here that it has this part here. Then if I go over to this one, you know, I would have expected those. And what I am showing is that table of contents only works for each different page. So in this case, the table of content is just for this tab. This table of content is here. Now, if I copy this over, you can get those links there. It's not going to be the same as this where you can like refresh it. So like if I go here and then maybe we have another like device setup, I can go down here. Again, if I copy all of this, and go back here, you can see that this isn't there. It is actually not formatted as a table, like you can see the outline there, table of contents that is. If I put this here, it's now set up as a table. And if I push refresh, it's going to refresh on the page it's on now. Well, let's take a look, more options. Show page numbers, yes, okay. Sorry, I didn't actually play around with that before trying this video, but what I was gonna get at is unfortunately you can't make a table of contents for each tab yet. I think that would be a very helpful feature just so that people can go to the different ones. An option that you can do is like what I did here. Um, let me just 
paste this in, you'll just want the links. So, you know, if you paste it and it shows like that, if you go into it and copy it, then you'll just get the links. Because when it's set up as a table of contents, when you push the refresh button, it's going to go back to whatever tab you're in versus this. The other way is you can share different tabs through the copy link. So maybe you want to copy the link and just paste that there. And you can do the tab to replace it with a chip. If you do that, it's going to just be whatever the title is. But then you can see when you click into it, it's going to go to the technology asset management tab. And so then now we're here in this tab and we can do what we need to. So again, it depends on how you want to set it up. The navigation is primarily going to be over here, but there are options to get links. Alternatively, you could instead paste that link, know that this is going to the technology asset management tab, edit link, and then just say technology asset management. And maybe you want to say tab, you know, whatever it is. And then you could take this and kind of have it there and sort of build your own option to get there. But again, it's not as nice as if you could just make a table of contents and then show everything. So hopefully that'll get changed here um, as it's continuing. The other, other thing about, you know, some separation of all of these. If you go to the overview and you're like, cool, I like this document, I need to print it, and you do control P, it's going to just do whatever tab you're in, at least at this point. I guess I didn't look at these background graphics, no. Yeah, from what I've seen, it's all its own document. So think of this document, like I said, it is the filing cabinet, and now you are picking this specific folder or tab, if you will, and copying what's on there. If you go over to this one and print, then it'll be this. Um, oh, I wonder if that background graphics. I wonder why that's not. Well, in any case, that's not where we're talking about. For, I guess those might not uh, print, so be careful with those. But in any case, you would have to go to each tab and then print each one out in order for this to work. So, you know, if you have a ton of tabs, it might not be the best method of, you know, storing it, especially if you need to get printed versions. From what I've seen and how I can think about this, I think this is a great way to be able to really organize if there are like specific tabs for specific people and what they're using. I think having like an overview like this and different ones where like, okay, now I'm in there, it makes it so each one is not as busy as if you have one document and then, you know, page breaks to separate them or using, you know, section headers to. Again, there's a place to use those, but this is just gives a new flexible option to organize it. And again, you don't need to use them. You can still continue to use only the kind of outline as it would be. You just don't push the plus button, don't have those, and then you can do it, use it as is. So it is an update, but it's also not going to force you to use it, if that makes sense. Now, I did kind of play around with some other ones. And since I do work primarily in education, I just had some thoughts and ideas there. And it's a little more education specific, but it might be helpful for you as well. So I made this writing process just as an idea of what, something you could share specifically with students. Here you can see the document tab has kind of this brainstorming, rough draft, final draft. There's other writing processes. This is very bare bones. But you could do something like this and have it have kind of this section as the information for brainstorming. Then you can, like I was mentioning, have different links to those sections to give students just a blank canvas to use their notes, use it however they want, be able to do that. Same for the rough draft, you can have, you know, an outline there and then a final draft just to have this clear, like, this is the first thing you do, the next thing, and then the final thing. You could use tabs, too, if you're doing some sort of um, project like, you know, have an opinion. Are you for or against this idea? And you could have two separate ones so they can, you know, collaborate with others if they want, be able to have two different places for ideas, and then, you know, cross-reference if needed. Another important thing to note is that these tabs will, if you share a copy to each student in Google Classroom, for example, it will actually keep all of these 
tabs as it is when they create it. So they would have access to all of these, you know, however you organized it. So keep that in mind as well. The other kind of template that I started working on was something like an onboarding, offboarding documentation. I think that this is a very helpful way to just have collaboration. I think this update is really great for collaboration, where you might have multiple different departments working on the same idea or concept, like onboarding and offboarding. You can have kind of an outline to have roles and responsibilities. Here I have kind of a, an optional way to get that table of contents, again, just for this document outline. And then I have onboarding and then the accounts for each one there. So accounts, technology, benefits, then the offboarding, account deletion, you know, technology check-in, and so on. And each one of these has their own little spot where you can, you know, go in, do what you need to do, and so on and so forth. And again, it's helpful where you can just go like, okay, well, I only do stuff with benefits and pay, so I just need to go to this tab and I can start working. Whereas I, you know, if it's all in one document and it's a large document, you'd have to scroll down a bunch. It's again, different way to do the same thing, but I, I think that these types of examples would make it very, very. Now, the last thing I wanted to show on this video is the mobile version. I'm on an iOS device. I'll just open it up here. Let me just turn off. I have dark mode again. I'm a dark mode fan, so there we go. But anyway, on mine, you can see that I can see the overview. I can, you know, see my cursor on the screen too. And all of these links, if I click them, will go to those different sections. So if I, you know, go there. The other thing is at the bottom, there's actually this documents tab that'll be for the navigation. So you can use that to just basically quickly go through and see. So again, keeping in mind, it's pretty, pretty nice on there and pretty easy. So it's not like if you're on an iPad or a, you know, iOS device, it's not going to work. The other thing is you can go to the settings, you can go to document tabs, and that'll open it up too. So I think this, uh, this update, they, it's pretty, pretty ready for end users. And honestly, I think it's pretty nice. The table doesn't work out that great on mobile, but you know, in general, that's just kind of how it rolls. So Hopefully you find this helpful. Hopefully you're looking forward to it. Again, take a look, try making a copy of this, play around with it, see what you like, what you don't like, and let me know in the comments if there's certain features that you're hoping to see. I bet if we are continually asking, Google is pretty good at updating those things to those. Again, I think the printer one is gonna be a big thing because if you have a ton of tabs, that is just gonna make way more work. But on the flip side, it might be nice to be able to just have those specific things too. So I can see it working both ways as a pro and a con but hopefully we have access to you do whatever we want. So thank you again to those YouTube things like share, subscribe, and we'll see you next video. Bye now.